Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily prophetic utterance to start your day. Coming to you from the natural bushlands of Australia and talking to you today about the subject of being a gatekeeper. That's right. You are a gatekeeper. Has anyone ever seen that movie called The Secret Garden? I know my daughters have, and I know that they love the story, which depicts a secret garden that is surrounded by a wall, and also it is covered uh, with greenery so that you can't even know where it is. It's a secret, and so it is with us. We are like a secret garden, but there are also gates to that garden. And there are three gates, to be honest with you. There is the eye gate, there is the ear gate, and there is the mouth gate. Now, the eye gate and the ear gate are the only things that we are allowed to come in. But the mouth gate also allows things to go out. And that's why the Bible says to us, according to the Word of God, it says in Luke chapter 6 verse 45 the bible says for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks hallelujah and the bible says also according to ephesians 4 verse 29 do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those that listen We've got to be careful of the words we speak. We've got to be careful of the gossip we spread or the slander we spread about someone else. But we've also got to be careful of the intake of the things coming in. Now, when the angel of the Lord came to, um, you know, the father of John the Baptist, he says, be careful that he doesn't drink any strong drink. And then we see also that the mother of Samson, she was told by the angel of the Lord, be careful that he also does not have any strong drink. I can attest to you that when the Lord came and visited me and I stopped drinking alcohol, it was at that point that the Lord started to use me in a very strong way. So we've got to learn to make certain sacrifices. Are you willing to make the sacrifices to keep that garden secret? Because we've got to keep it secret because the enemy wants to come in. Now we see according to uh, Job chapter 1, we see the story of Job. And we see that there was a hedge of protection around Job that Satan could not get into. That's a little bit like your secret life. But once that gate was open, then the enemy was able to come in. Now, it's interesting that we see according to Job 3 verse 25, it says that the very things that he feared come along. So fear was an entry point for Satan also to have a legal right to come into Job's life to start to cause havoc. What are we allowing to come into our lives? What are we allowing to come into our lives to not allow us to be used to the fullness that God wants you to be used? God wants to use you fully. But what's coming out of your mouth? What is going into you? What is coming into your eyes? What is coming into your ears? Well, let's look at the eyes and the ears right now. According to Proverbs 4 verses 20 to 22, it says, My son... Give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings and do not let them depart from your eyes. So we hear the eyes and the ears. And then it goes on to say that keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So the ear gate and the eye gate are the only entry points that is only a one way in, but the mouth is an entry in and also an entry out. What are you allowing to come into your eyes? What are you allowing to come into your ears? Now, if you were to see with your eyes a murder, a horrific murder, you would remember that thing for the rest of your life. Now, if you were also to go and be invited to a wedding and the wedding was so beautifully done, it was so, uh, so, so awesomely prepared and put together, you would also remember that for the remaining of your life. See, what we allow to go, what we allow to see, 
will affect us either negatively or positively. See, what we see or look at will affect us. It will affect us. Look at what happened to David. When David, according to 2 Samuel chapter 11, when he saw uh, Bathsheba, he saw her and what happened? He lusted after her. So you've got to be careful of what you're looking at. If you're looking at pornography, if you're looking at certain movies, if you're looking at certain television, if you're, if you're looking at, at, at a woman uh, lustfully within your heart, it's the same as doing the action as Jesus said. We've got to learn to make a covenant with our eyes. We've got to learn to say, you know what, I'm not going to allow this stuff to come into my eye gate. I'm not going to allow it to come in to the secret garden, to that secret place that I want to keep safe. I don't want to defile it with thoughts I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. You know, when someone starts to watch pornography, they are plagued with those visions of the things that they were looking at. And the enemy comes to remind them in guilt and shame of those things. But you've got to learn to keep your eyes pure from those things that the enemy comes to bring. See, Genesis 3, 7 says, Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Once the woman and the man's eyes were open, they saw that they were naked. See, they had come to the realization, when, when you allow a child to watch inappropriately, appropriate things. You are taking the innocence away from that child. So you've got to be careful as into you don't just let a child watch anything on television. You don't allow them to watch anything on any of those pay TV like Netflix or whatever. You, you've got to put restrictions. You've got to put boundaries. You've got to be careful of what your children watch on YouTube. You've got to be careful about what's on the internet today. We've got to be careful, saints, of what we allow to go into our eyes. Essentially, this means that we need to be conscious of what we watch and hear on a regular basis. Hallelujah. See, many people cannot enter into what God has for them because they are not willing to give up their junk. Are you willing to to give up your junk? Are you willing to say no to things? Are you willing to protect the secret garden? Are you willing to close all the gates to the enemy that he has had a foothold into your life? you got to learn to guard these things, precious saints, because the enemy is always there. What does he want to do? He wants to defile he wants to defile your eye gates. He wants to defile your ear gates. That's what he wants to do. Many Christians will never be able to see or hear in the spiritual realm because they have given their lenses into the enemy's camp. Are you willing to make those sacrifices? Are you willing to make the sacrifices for the anointing? And many people say, oh, pastor, I wish I was doing what you were doing. You've got to learn to make the sacrifices. You've got to learn to, 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 you know, to, to, to condition your body, to condition your gates to be closed that the enemy would not come and defile them anymore. Hallelujah. If we were only feeding on maybe news media, magazines, TV or internet, uh, any of that type of information, it is no wonder that we... Uh, have an issue today in the church why it's weak why it's feeble today it's because we've allowed these things to come in to our eye gates to our ear gates and even to our mouth, ga mouth gates many Christians today want to want to compromise want to say you know what it's all right to get drunk it's all right to do this it's, it is not all right all these things have consequences to your spiritual life but when you learn to Pray and fast and subject your body and say, God, I want to come into right alignment with you. Yes, Lord, I've made mistakes, but He is willing to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness, to give you a new beginning. But you can't continue in the old habits. You can't say, well, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go back to my old habits tomorrow. No, you've got to learn to keep yourself pure from those things that the enemy is trying to do in your life. Let's look at the Bible. 1 John 2, 16 says, For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but 
from the world. That is the prince of this world. The prince of this world is Satan. All those things, they are not from God. They are from Satan's world. See, in this verse, we are warned against anything that would entice us through our eyes. We've got to be careful of the things that we see, precious saints. Paul also said in Ephesians 1.18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know the hope to which God has called you, the riches of His glory and His inheritance of the saints. See, God wants you to have good eyes. He wants you to be enlightened. What about the servant, the servant of Elijah? His spiritual eyes were closed. He saw the enemy uh, army that was against him, all the chariots, all the forces. But he could not see in the spiritual realm because his eye gates were not pure. They were not pure, but then God opened up his eyes. He was able to see in the spiritual realm. He was able to see that those that were with him were more than those that were against him. Have you allowed your eye gates to be defiled? Have you allowed your, your gate to be defiled? Have you, have you allowed the enemy to have a foothold into your life? You've got to recognize the value of eternal things by seeing through spiritual eyes. Don't be derailed by temporary or physical distractions. That's why we, we go by faith and not by sight. Many of us are troubled by things that are happening around us today in the world. And all you've got to do is watch Facebook uh, videos or you've got to watch uh, what's on the news and you see all the things, the terrible things that are going on in the world. You can be defiled by those things because you're not reading the Word of God. Some people have come away from reading the Word of God and getting their information from the internet opposed to the Word of God. The Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. If we want to keep things pure, we've got to keep the Word of God within inside of us, precious saints. Hallelujah. We have not guarded our gates and now we have gardens that are neglected, destroyed or diseased. Many people's lives are evidence of gates that have been left unguarded. If you have a garden and you just let the weeds come in and grow over, trust me, it doesn't look very beautiful. It takes cultivation. It takes weeding. It takes trimming and pruning. It takes fertilizing. You've got to make sure that you are tending to your secret garden. You are tending to that secret place with God, spending time with Him. You've got to be hidden with Him. When you are hidden with Him, trust me, you're going to start to glow just like it was with Moses when he spent time in the glory. He came back and his face was transformed. Precious saints, God has good plans for your life. Hallelujah. We got to learn to obey Him, to obey Him today for when we start to make these little sacrifices for the little things with God, then God can start to use us. Are you willing to make those sacrifices today? Isaiah 45 verse 22 says, Look to Him and be saved all the ends of the earth, for there is no other God. See, if we all behold Jesus and we behold His glory and behold Him, we are transformed more and more into His likeness. The full unmerited favour and truth. Don't miss the powerful promise of keeping your eyes upon Jesus and Him alone. When you keep your eyes upon Jesus, let me tell you, you're not going to allow anything to come in to your eye gates. You're not going to allow anything to come in through your ear gates. You're you're not going to allow anything to defile you with things that you know that is not of God. Precious saints, it's time for us to live for Him. The Bible shows us that there is a direct correlation between hearing and seeing Jesus and the health also of our physical bodies. Hallelujah. Matthew 6.22 says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? When you allow your eyes to only see darkness, let me tell you, it's going to manifest in 
your body will even bring about sickness. But if you allow God's light of his word to come into your life, he is the light. He was in the beginning and the light it it what it it push back the darkness the light of god jesus christ is the light of the world he is the light that came in to bring us out of darkness hallelujah jesus has a plan for us we are being told in this verse that if we have blessed eyes then our bodies will not be filled with darkness so therefore it is essential as a child of god to fill our life with the things of God. What are you allowing your ears to hear? You know, sometimes we can hear music, secular music, and the lyrics is is essential things. It is lustful things. It is destructive things. It is rebellious things. What are you listening to? What are you opening up your ears to? What gossip are you listening to? What, what things are you agreeing to? What is your mouth speaking today? It is time to cleanse yourself that you may be ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let, let me tell you this. It is an honest truth. You can't expect the Lord to take us and snatch us away if we are defiling ourselves and opening our gates up to our secret garden for the enemy to come in and plague and do whatever he wants we've got to keep ourselves clean we've got to keep ourselves pure hallelujah hallelujah many of us want to blame satan many of us want to blame other people but it's because what we have opened up what have you opened up today what have you opened up your eyes to in that secret time what have you opened up your ears to what have you opened up your mouth to saying or speaking or in taking what are you allowing to come into your life? God wants to do something new today, saints. He wants to do something new with you. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit, for His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. God wants to show you deep and wonderful things, precious saints. He loves you and He has good plans for you. But are you allowing God to use you today? See, if sin can't get through one gate, He will try another. So what are the lyrics of your favorite song that you're listening to? What are those things that we are defiling ourselves? If you choose to watch sin, you've got to allow those consequences to come. But you can make a difference today. You can repent of that. You can repent of the things that you've opened your eyes to, you've opened your ears to, or you've even opened your mouth to. You can repent and God can forgive you. And He can give you the grace through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can bring about the sanctification work and start to prune all those areas. He's even promised that we are the branches. He is the vine we are the branches and any area that is not bearing fruit the father will come and cut that area so that we can bear fruit that will last are you going to allow God to cut off those areas what is the Holy Spirit speaking to you today what is he telling you today to give up what is he telling you today to sacrifice let me tell you no sacrifice you make today is ever ever going to ever be not rewarded in the end. No, He's going to reward you a hundredfold. He wants to give you great things. He wants to use you. Do you want your eyes to see visions? Do you want your ears to hear the voice of God? Do you want your mouth to be a preacher for God's Word? Then allow those gates to be closed to the enemy and purify yourselves today and cleanse yourself today and the anointing will increase. God's power will move for you. You will raise the dead. You will raise up and pray for the, for, for the sick and they shall recover because Jesus Christ who is the hope of all glory lives inside of you it is time for you precious saints to get right with God this time of fasting of coming into the secret place is also a time for us to prepare for his coming a time for us to prepare our eyes a time for us to prepare our ears and our mouths that they may be purified Isaiah 6 says that the angel of the Lord came and put a hot coal 
on the tongue of Isaiah because he was undone. He was he was speaking unclean things and he was around people that were speaking unclean things. So his mouth gate needed to be cleansed. His ear gate needed to be cleansed. His eye gate needed to be cleansed on that day. And when they were purified, God said, who will go for me? And Isaiah said, I will go. Send me. Do you want God to send you? It's time to allow him to purify those areas of your life that are not pleasing to him. Hallelujah. Precious saints, let us pray today. If that is you here today, then God wants to cleanse you. God wants to close up those gates. God wants to close up the gates of the ears, close up the gates of the mouth, close up the gates of the eyes. Anything that you've allowed to come in, anything that was that was despicable in God's eyes, do not just allow God to forgive you today and He will wash you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If that is you today, I want you to repeat this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, today I repent of all of my sins, anything that is not pleasing to you. Wash me with the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Today, Father, I receive your Son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord, as my God, and as my personal Savior. And from today, I am born again. It is a new beginning. Send me your Holy Spirit. Cleanse my eyes. Cleanse my mouth. Cleanse my ears today. Today, Father, I surrender it all to you. My life, my future, my mistakes. The devil is a liar. The blood washes me. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I am loved in Jesus' name. I just want to pray this prayer for you. Lord, I pray we give you permission to show us what's in our heart that may be, not, may be displeasing to you and keep us from going, those things that keep us from going forward into all that you have called us to do. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for anything that our eyes have looked upon that has been ungodly. Cleanse us, our eye gates today with the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we repent of anything, Lord, that our ears have listened to that have been ungodly. We renounce all rebellion and unclean spirits that, Lord, that we may have opened ourselves up to to receive. And we take back all legal ground that the enemy made and had today. And we give it back to Jesus Christ. Cleanse us today. Cleanse our ear gates with the blood of Jesus Christ. We bind those spirits and command them to leave us now. We pray also, Lord, that you would cleanse us and our mouth gates today completely, wholeheartedly, anything that we've opened it up to do. And we renounce anything that we have tried, any drugs, any 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 alcohol, anything, Lord, that is unpure in your sights. Remove it today. Let us be cleansed today. We thank you, Lord, for a fresh touch of your Holy Spirit. Anoint our eyes, anoint our ears anoint our mouth that we may receive you and fill us more with your Holy Spirit, with your power today. Come and touch your people. Come and touch them today. Come and touch them. Come and fill them. Come and touch them. Come and fill them with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray today, I speak to that devil. Devil today, I bind you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and I command you right now to come out of that person, to come out of that person and leave them now and go back to the pit of hell Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you right now to come out of them and go back to the pit of hell today in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray today you will bless your people as they partake of this fasting. Lord, that they would press in, that they would go further, that they would go deeper in intimacy with you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Come and touch your people that as they participate of this fast, there is an open heaven. God is going to pour out His blessings upon you but you've got to press in you've got to say God I put my prayer list aside I place it in my Bible but Lord I come to you and I say God change me refine me see this is not about you and me 
This is about Him. This is about Him and us and our relationship with Him. He wants you to go to that secret place. He wants you to go to that place that you can spend more intimate time with Him and get right before Him. And then as you finish this fast, you're going to come out more powerfully, more prayerful than ever before, precious saints. Oh Lord, touch your people. Touch your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrowpath Ministries in Perth, Western Australia. It is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And if you've liked this utterance, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Go to our free website, repentancerevival.com. And it's sure this is day two of the three-day fast. Tomorrow is the last day, precious saints. And we're going to press in. We are praying for you. We are interceding on your behalf. But put your prayer requests in your Bible and say, God, I just want to get close to you. I just want, I have done this so I can get close to you. A lot of people just want to come to God to get something. But just draw near to God because He loves you and you love Him. Learn to love Him more. Learn to cherish Him more because you've got to learn now before you enter into His kingdom. Hallelujah. God wants you. God loves you. And God is going to bring that breakthrough you need within your life. So from my family to yours, God bless you. We love you. We are praying for you, precious saints. Shalom, shalom, shalom. 